Yes. Okay. So welcome, Engineer Melda. Thank you. Engineer Anthony Ndolo and I are hosting you this evening. Thank you. And we much. appreciate your time. Yes. Uh, so as uh, we know, we have known you in the council since 2016. Our or rather, yeah, you'll tell us about your work at IEK. So also, every member, welcome to the discussion today. Today we are hosting engineer Imelda Uriambo, who is running for the second vice president. She's also the current vice president of the IEK. Uh, the shade is like, uh, she'll introduce herself, tell us her engineering background, her, can, uh, her candidacy, what is she going for and what is she bringing on the table this time round and also her work at IK as the vice president uh, and in the committees that she has held positions or as a member, and also about uh, mentorship and capacity building, all those committees. Tell us about her manifesto. We'll have a question time, and then she'll uh, then we'll have a parting shot, uh, or rather she'll pitch her candidacy. So Karibu Sana Engineer Melda. Thank you very much. You said almost everything about me. You said my name. I'm Engineer Imelda Udiambo. I'm the current second vice uh, chairperson of IEK. I'm running again for second vice uh, president of, of IEK. Uh, um, IEK, I'm passionate uh, in IEK. But uh, my background is that uh, I'm a seasoned engineer. I've worked in engineering for three decades. I'm an electrical engineer and uh, I work with Kenya Power. I've done many things in Kenya Power, including uh, the connection of electricity to the big industries in Kenya, Bamburi, uh, just to mention a few, uh, even Samia Industrial Park that is near us. But um, in as far as IEK is concerned, I'm very passionate about the work. I started in uh, uh, 2016 uh, as a co-opted member of IEK. Then uh, I ran again for council membership in uh, 20, uh, 2018. Uh, no, what are the right years? The council before this one. This one was from 2018 to to 2020. Then from 2016 to 2018, I was a council member. Prior to that, I was a nominated member of the council. So that means that I, I've worked for the engineering profession for the last six years. I'm still ready to continue with the good work that we've been doing under the transformed uh, IEK. And that is why I'm running again as the second vice president of IEA. So, so I want to uh, copy and let the mantra of uh, our former president, Mwai Kibaki, yeah, of Kazi and the Lake, because I, I've done a real good work in um, my capacity as a person of capacity building and mentoring. Now, uh, the other question was. Um, uh, you can prompt me again, Diana. Are you listening? Yes, I, I've seen you've talked about your work at IK. Would you speak more about your candidate, uh, like what you're vying for and the job description of the second vice president, like for members to understand what it actually entails? Okay, the job description for the second vice president is that um, uh, the second vice president is part of the executive committee that uh, uh, controls the uh, the working of IK in terms of uh, even the financial controls, the policies. The exco, which is composed of uh, five members of the council, that is the president, the first vice president, second vice president the treasurer and the honorary secretaries, they're the ones who steer the activities of IEK. They have to discuss first before it is brought to members, and whatever the members propose must be sanctioned by the, the EXCO. And it is in the EXCO also where we talk about uh, 
sensitive issues in the secretariat, which includes even the recruitment of the secretariat, the CEO, and any disciplinary measures that are to be taken against uh, any member that uh, is found to be unethical. So all those issues are discussed at the expo. And uh, we've done a very good work, particularly uh, the year 2018, the year 2020, and uh, for continuity of the work, uh, I I given myself for another uh, short so that I can continue with the good work that we've done. We've uh, uh, we are also in charge of uh, the presidential dinner, the uh, conferencing that. Uh, I've since improved from when I joined the, the council, we used to have a conference attendees of 400 thereabouts. But uh, uh, when we had now the transformed IK, I call it the transformed, quote unquote, uh, the last uh, uh, two years, we've seen improvement to 800, which we had in uh, 2018 and 2019. We had an overflow of uh, conference attendees of about 1,200. So uh, that is really why I want to stay as an EXCO member of IEK and use my energy and strength. And uh, uh, from my experience, which I got after I attended um, a conference in Australia, there are a lot of learnings and experiences that we got there, which we want to bring home. And even now, uh, as the elections are going on, we, we are already thinking of how we are going to make our conference, the, this year's conference, much better. And we are already planning for uh, attendance of over 2,000 delegates from all over the world, locally and all over the world. So that is what I want to do. Any other prompting, Diana? Hello. Okay. All right, you can hear me? Hello? Yes, I can All hear right. you. Okay, so uh, would you want to get into detail specifically like um, in numbers, because we engineers love numbers, especially what you achieved in the mentorship and capacity building committee. Also, there's a question coming in on what specifically have you achieved from 2016 and uh, what, what more work will you do that you have not done yet when you get another chance to serve at the second VP? it is on record that we really improve even in the registration of women because of our activities. We used to have uh, scheduled quarterly meetings with the women to motivate them and to mentor them and also to tell them to register and to participate in all the activities of engineering. So uh, towards the end of the 2018, we even uh, managed to, got the, to get the peers of gender mainstreaming who talked to the women and the women, uh, uh, because of the activities that I spearheaded, that I championed, we ended up having more women in the council than we've ever had before. Previously, we used to have only one woman in the council, that was the junior Rosalie. Then later on, she was joined by Jane McNeely. But in the last council, we had a record number of five women in the council. And we even managed to have a woman CEO who is an engineer join the IEK. Um, in as far as the numbers of 2018, 2020, when now I had uh, an enhanced uh, responsibility, I was only dealing with women. I was also, in, my committee was also in charge of the young engineers and uh, the mentorship of even the older engineers. We managed to uh, do destination PIPs in Mombasa, destination PIPs, as opposed to the PIPs that uh, used to be held in Nairobi only previously. We had a PIP in uh, Nakuru, we had a PIP in Mombasa. 
under my chairmanship. We also uh, had national uh, preparation for professional interview for Safaricom, where we had four sessions and we managed to uh, check all the engineers in Safaricom through uh, preparation for interview. And from the records that we have uh, during the, the last membership committee, we had many engineers from Safaricom registering as professional engineers. Uh, on top of that, we also uh, mentored the professional engineers. We had a, a project management uh, uh, course for water engineers in Nakuru, which was very successful. We, we, when we finished, we, everybody was wondering how we managed to pull through and have a hundred water engineers, all of them in Nakuru, and they patiently stayed there for five days. They were well trained and everybody. Other than that, we also mentored schools. One of the schools that we mentored uh, in uh, 2018 managed to do very well in the KCSC exams that was Kenya High. And uh, the headmistress called me and, uh, uh, and really appreciated my effort because uh, when we went to Kenya High, I managed to marshal uh, almost over 50 women engineers who are going to show post to the girls that Engineering is not only for the men, that there are women who have practiced engineering for over even 30 years, me included, and there are many others. And that has really motivated the girls. And when you looked at the results of the Kenya High girls, uh, there are so many of them who are not going to be engineering all the disciplines of engineering. Thank you very much. Yes, any, any prompting, Diana? Cedric, could I've you talked can... about the nation PIPs, yeah. uh, based PIPs, and also mentorship for the senior engineer. On top of that, we had very many talks for under the umbrella of the presidential dinner. Of course, most of the preparations were done under my committee, and the president was just the umbrella for, for officiating the occasion. Diana, are you still there? Yes, I am. You can hear me? Yes, uh, I have said you did, yeah. So there is a question from Cedric. Cedric, could you please go ahead and ask your question? Please unmute your mic. Uh, engineer, good evening. Good evening, Cedric. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your uh, input in the membership and the uh, capacity building committee. We appreciate it. And uh, we hope that uh, whoever is coming in in that chair position will take even higher from where you left. We're really grateful what you've done to our women, especially in the fraternity. But uh, nonetheless, yes. I also like to make you appreciate that it's also important to also keep you accountable for other roles that you played now that you are seeking re-election for a position, which is most, which is going to be in the ex-co. Yes. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of the ex-co is to make sure that the tasks assigned to the committees formulated by the council actually execute their mandates as per the terms of reference that they are given. Is that correct? Yes, to make sure that they execute their work. The, 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 the executive council, no, one of the a, as a member of the council, there is no big stick that you can use on a member who doesn't uh, do his work. What we do is just to talk to them and also mentor them, since I'm the chairman of the mentorship committee. Actually, I meant as a member yeah. of the executive council of the, of the, of the council of the institution, my understanding is that the executive council has also a responsibility to ensure that the different committees actually execute their, their mandates or their responsibilities. Is that correct? Yes, I, I hear that. So my question is this. Uh, what but uh, what I'm saying is that after elections, there is just as much as we can do in order to make sure that a member of a committee executes his work. 
including uh, we, we have committees uh, which never even met throughout the two years and uh, even though we talked to them we 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 are limited in the sense that we can't give them warning letters we can't uh, spank them so that is what i mean i have understood your question very well but we are supposed to make sure there are instances when if we give them assignments the committees are supposed to do certain things and they don't do there are instances when we run with it but uh, there is no uh, mechanism of disciplining such a person in the constitution uh, um, I'm yet to find a clause where we are uh, given the mandate to even uh, remove somebody who has been elected by members from the council. So, such. Uh, I, I, won't even ask, I won't even ask my question. Okay. I won't even ask my My question was this eh? As the executive council, which has executive powers of the institution, what yes. is the existing framework in place? in line with the, with the professional governance that ensures that the executive council will follow up and uh, avoid a scenario where a committee which is given a task to deliver to the institution does not fail. Like for example, as you say, how is it possible that the executive council can be quiet and you have a committee which has not met for two years and are supposed to give you results for you to give us, the members? So what framework is existing in terms of executive power that lie with the executive council, with the executive committee, sorry, that ensures the committees gives results? What, what mechanism is there existing? Like can you, for example, call, uh, I mean, uh, someone, the chairman of say the APJ committee and ask him, these are the terms of reference we gave you, why are you not meeting? Is there anything like that goes on? It is exactly what I'm saying. We normally call them, we talk to them, we persuade them, but there is just as far as we can go. I don't know whether we are talking about the same thing. Yes, yes. So what I'm talking about somebody who has been elected. It's just, uh, there's just as much as you can go. You can't spank them. But the exco normally calls and, 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 and tries to find out in a, a very uh, respectful manner why they are not doing certain things. But most of the times they say it's because of their work, because uh, as you all know, council work is basically voluntary. You yes. do it voluntarily. Cedric, are we okay. together? So, yes, we are together. So I'm just getting your point. So in but other in words, instances, if... when we can't get results, then there are times when we are forced to do it on our own. But we can't do it as well because of the responsibilities, the many responsibilities. Okay, so the existing structure at the IEK is such that if tomorrow you say, for example, allow me to be the chairman of, say, the membership committee, for yes. example, and I fail yes. to deliver on all the terms of reference you have given me, there's yes. nothing the executive committee can do to me. And therefore, the council mandate on that aspect is going to fail just like that. There's something they can do. They, they try to find out what the problem is and look for solutions, uh, maybe possible replacement. If the chairman has an able assistant, then the assistant is mandated to, to go through with it. But in as far as disciplining or, or removing such a person from the council, then that one, the constitution, the constitution does not allow. So that brings me to my final question. So the committees that failed the last council, for example, the APJ, for example, the ADR committees, what steps did the executive committee do? As you say, we, we did. We talked to them. We, we talked to them. We, we talked to them at a breakfast. We tried to find out at the council meeting. We did all that. And, and, uh, and uh, some of the works that they were supposed to do were done by somebody else, but not all, of course. Oh, okay. I, I, I listened. Uh, uh, I, I hear what you are saying. But you know, I'm the second vice president. There was the yes, president, yes. and yeah. yes. I'm just actually worried because you know the committee is where the work gets done. I know. So if the, I've been there for six years. So the committee. Yeah, if the committee the fails, gets done. and then the executive committee cannot reprimand them or replace the chairman or the chairman of the committee, which who, is who has volunteered to be there. So we we talked to the uh, chairman of the advocacy committee. We talked to the chairman of the uh, the arbitration committee, and uh, and 
and, and we told them just as much, except the time now ran out too quickly. Some of the works were done by the executive committee, and some of the works remained. I'm sorry. Okay, maybe just as an audio, if you get an engineer in the next council, maybe I would maybe suggest that you have to come up with a framework of how uh, these positions are going to be put to be accountable to, to you, the, the executive council, because the committee is, uh, is, is where the work gets done. So if they fail, it means you fail. If you fail, it means you have failed us. So yeah, I, I understand. That's why I was talking of uh, the review. Those classes should come out in the review, uh, the, the constitution review, so that we have a way of even removing members who are not performing during the term of the council. There are people, I can, I'm sorry to say, there are also others who never even attended any meeting if they were in the council. So that, is very, that is very wrong, because uh, it's yeah, we're expecting... Like now, when we are having elections, everybody is, is talking about the same mantra. Everybody yeah. is talking about capacity building. Everybody is talking about yeah. uh, the growing of uh, engineers from GE to PEs, which they never yes. participated in. So it's just the same. People Actually, are thinking, we copy yes. and we talk about the same things. Everybody is playing a role in non allowance for engineers, and they don't, when it comes to meetings, some of them don't even come for meetings. So, those are things okay. that should be embedded in the new constitution when we are reviewing the constitution so that we have a way of the way uh, in parliament we impeach members who don't perform, so that we impeach those council members who don't perform. That is, those are my 10 cent thoughts. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, engineer. That's, that's, that's all I have, Diana. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, because the, there's a question from Dola that's asking, like, uh, you actually talked to them in writing, uh, where are they allowed to steal positions? That, uh, but I think you've answered that saying the constitution does not, does not give an a clause for what happens to council members who don't perform and we actually yeah. hope that the new constitution will capture mm -hmm. that so is there any member yeah. why are they allowed you, you know uh, when uh, uh, according to the council members who are supposed to vote to bet the members who are buying for elections but sometimes it becomes very awkward when you are also vying for a post and you are betting the others. Uh, during the last elections, the uh, 2018, uh, uh, letters were sent to some uh, uh, members who had uh, taken the, the, the institution to court. And uh, the person who signed those letters, uh, because they were stopped from buying, because of the reason that they have, uh, they had uh, court cases against the institution. So we were arguing that how do you again want to be a council member of an, an institution that you're taking to court? So the person who signed the letters uh, paid the, 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 can I call it the ultimate price because he was never elected again. He, he was a victim. And uh, that therefore means that this time when it came to vetting members, everybody was shy. Nobody wanted to, to, to lift their head up and, and say no against anybody who wanted to buy. So anybody who placed in his nomination papers were allowed to run for elections. That's what happened this time. You understand? Yeah, I get you. The council are the ones supposed to vet, but the council members, since most of them were running for re-election, nobody dared to, to stop anybody from buying. Because again, uh, I'm sorry to say, some of these things, even though we say them in the boardrooms, they normally leak out. People would always say that, oh, it's so and so will stop people, you know, such like things. So this time, everybody was allowed to run, regardless of their history, regardless of whether they performed, or whether they didn't perform. Yeah, which is indeed very risky. So my mm -hmm. question, mm -hmm. That, yes. yes, Cedric, I'm giving you an opportunity in a while. My question is on women engineers. Like we hosted uh, engineers TV in Aoma here the other day and review committee. I mean, this is a very crucial process that should include everyone. 
including women, persons with disability, but my question specifically is to you, like uh, in terms of the women engineers chapter, how have you brought in women? How do you ensure that women are actually include, included in all committees? Because his response was like, uh, no women showed interest. Is that true? And uh, what effort did you make or what effort do you think should be made to encourage more women to take up these spaces? These spaces? Mm, you know, uh, I, I'm a feminist and uh, there are times when uh, I, I always tell them that uh, uh, some of this creation of interests are normally done in a half. Like they can put up uh, an advert like today and they give you one day to, and they talk about it at night so that all the men will always have their adverts ready so that when the deadline comes the men are ready the women are hot and aware so oh, but uh, in the spirit of inclusivity there are times when we've insisted that uh, uh, if there is no woman who has shown interest then you 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 head hunt you hand pick you look for somebody and, and put in because really uh, as we've always said in our uh, talks with the women and even with everybody during our mentorship, this world is for all of us. It's not a man's world. We constitute 50% of the population. And there is no discussion that can go on like when we are talking about the constitution of the community. Why, why can't they include women? Even if they didn't show interest, why can't they look for somebody and educate them? Most of the times, even in the board, uh, nominations that we've been doing in the ministries, they've instructed us very carefully that when we, uh, we send IK nominations and there is no woman who has been uh, given in the list, then even the PSS and the CSS, they always uh, send back such nominations to a woman until a woman is included. That has always been the practice, and I don't know why engineer Uma is not privy to that part. All right, and uh, the f we'll be taking your internet connection is not uh, all that good. We'll be taking a breather in for me in three minutes time, so that you can also take some water as we take more questions. Though I'm still interested, like, did you headhunt for a woman in the Constitution Review Committee? Because that com that no, committee no, that should, no, woman should answer. Because I, I think there are some that they just do secretly without uh, involving us. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we can take a breather and then Cedric, um, Cedric will come. Cedric, your question will do after the break. Mm -hmm. Okay, I agree. Thank you. Okay. Three minutes. 